Hi guys! So I am so excited for today's video because today I am going to be talking about writing and I haven't done that for a really long time. I originally started my channel with the intent for it to be focused exclusively on writing and then at some point around December I kind of shifted into talking more about books and doing book reviews and everything. But I have missed talking about writing, I've missed connecting with other writers. If you're curious about the other writing videos, uh, they were basically garbage, so I've since deleted most of them. I do intend to do more writing videos, so if any of you have suggestions for videos about writing that you would like to see, let me know that in the comment section down below. Anyway, getting into what the video is about today, a little while back I filmed a video outlining all of the goals I have for myself for this upcoming season. And most of those goals, despite the fact that most of my channel is about books, those goals oriented around writing. I did have a fellow booktuber, her name is Lauren, and I'll link her channel down below. But I had her ask, uh, you know, how do you even get started writing? Even if you have ideas, how do you not let the idea of starting writing overwhelm you? A little bit of backstory about where I'm at in my writing process is that I have completed my first book in a fantasy series. I have gone through the beta reading phase and critique partners and everything, and I am about to have my book professionally edited here in the next few months. Obviously I had to start somewhere, and I really wish that somebody had made a video like this one talking about what they did to get started. So without further ado, here are my 10 tips to get started writing. Tip number one is to make sure that you actually have an idea. This might seem fairly obvious to some people, but I have in writing groups sometimes seen people leave comments saying that, oh, my teacher or my professor says I really have a gift for writing and that they think I should do something with it. I don't know what to write about though. What do you guys think? I think you shouldn't write. If you don't have an idea in your head, all you're gonna be able to do with your gifted writing abilities is rehash the same cliches and tropes that are already out there. It's not that the occasional cliche or trope is bad, but you have to have some originality with your story. So if you don't have an idea and you don't have a passion for writing, don't bother. That being said, if you do have an idea, but you have like the bare minimum, that's completely fine. You do not need your story to be completely fleshed out. You don't need to know every single detail of what's gonna happen to start. Tip number two is that if you have some scenes in mind, but you don't have everything, feel free to write your scenes out of order. Everybody has different writing styles. Some people are plotters, which means that they outline their entire novel, sometimes to a T, and they can only write their story if they know exactly what's gonna happen. And then there are people who are pantsers, who write by the seat of their pants, and they don't necessarily have everything figured out, but they figure it out as they go. Sometimes if you're the kind of person that likes to plan ahead, you might think that you're a plotter, but if you don't ever make the attempt to write it down because you don't have every scene in mind, you might be missing out on recognizing that you're actually a pantser and it won't even be a big deal. And if you are a plotter, you have to have your major points in mind anyway, so you know what to lead up to. So don't be afraid to write your scenes completely out of order. A lot of times the in-betweens will come later. Tip number three is to write an outline. I know I just got done saying that you don't have to have hardly anything in mind or you can start writing things out of order, but if you do have a lot already fleshed out in your head, just put it down chronologically and you're going to be so much more motivated to actually start writing because you'll be able to see where your story is going. Tip number four is to not set unrealistic goals. If you decide you're going to start writing and you think that your idea is one of the best that you've come across and that it's going to be an absolute bestseller, you might think, oh, I'm going to have this book done in two years and I'm going to see it on the shelf at my local bookstore. Not to be a total bummer and crush your dreams, but that's more than likely not going to happen. First off, the publishing process, whether it's traditional or self-published, is really tedious and takes a long time. Not only that, but to write a good book, to have it fleshed out, to have other people's eyes on it, to get it professionally edited, takes a ton of time. It will be such a burden off your shoulders if you do not put unrealistic goals on yourself and think that you have to have a deadline for when you're going to finish the book when you're first starting. Tip number five is to not feel pressured to write every single day. This might sound kind of contradictory to what you've probably read and heard from other people, but hear me out. 
If it is your job to write or if you have deadlines or contracts where you need to be writing at a frequent pace, yes, you should be writing daily. If you're able to write every day, that's fantastic. But for a lot of people, that just isn't possible. It's not even close. And luckily, writing is not like a sport. It's not like an instrument. It's not something that depends on muscle memory and needs to be done daily or your muscles forget. It's something about creating and it has to come from a place where your imagination is put to work. Tip number six is to keep some kind of a writing journal. Life can get really busy and sometimes you just don't have an hour to set aside by yourself to have some quiet time to write. Sometimes the only time you're gonna have to write is when you're waiting for your bus stop or you're waiting for someone to pick you up or you just have 10 minutes before the next thing in your life is about to happen. Sometimes in these moments though, this is when we get our best inspiration and if we don't have the ability to at least write it down, then chances are we're gonna forget. Tip number seven, and I kind of mentioned it in the last one, is to constantly be thinking about how you would describe things. Often it's difficult to write certain scenes when you know the characters are supposed to be feeling one way, but you in that moment aren't feeling that way at all. So the next time you're outside thinking like, oh my gosh, it's so hot, or you ate some bad food and your stomach hurts, or you're hungry, just ask yourself, how would I describe this? And then write it down. Tip number eight is to try out different kinds of writing exercises. Now, first off, I'll be the first to admit that writing prompts, I don't really go for those. I think they're super boring. But there are ways to make writing prompts fun. One would be sometimes there are complete the storybooks where you'll have one sentence of a scenario and then you have a page to make up what's gonna happen next. It might not sound like that much fun, but if you can find a friend or a family member to do this with you, it can be super funny. Another exercise that I personally find extremely helpful and I do quite often is listening to some music and then trying to imagine a scene to it. You can do this with literally any kind of music you like. If you want, you can even try to create scenes based off the lyrics. I personally will listen to instrumental music because at that moment there is absolutely no story in mind yet, so you have to come up with it completely from scratch. Tip number nine and one that most of you probably already do is reading. No matter how good you get at what you do, exposing yourself to other people is going to show you things that you did not think to do before. It applies in everything. In music, if I am learning a piece of music, I will listen to recordings and I will hear how other people did it and I'll try to soak it in. If you're playing a sport, let's say it's football, you see how somebody runs a certain play and now you think, oh, that got like 20 yards, we should figure out how to do that. Now, I'm not saying that you should literally copy a scene word for word and just insert your character's names into it. I'm saying that Every scene has been done before, action scenes, romantic scenes. Reading then exposes you to so many different ways to approach maybe let's say an action scene. You'll see one book where they mostly describe the feelings of the character and then another book that literally will describe the sound of the swords clashing. Exposing yourself to enough of this is going to help you develop your own voice before you even start writing. Suggestion number 10 is to get involved in the writing community in any way you can. My biggest suggestion is to try out NaNoWriMo. If you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, it stands for National Novel Writing Month and it occurs every November at a very busy time of year for most people. And the idea of it is to write at least 50,000 words in one month. It can be incredibly stressful if you really, really push yourself to do 50,000 words. But if your idea is to just get to know some other people in the writing community and to have some support, that's the best time of year to do it. If you go to NaNoWriMo's website, they usually have stuff going on throughout the whole year, but November is obviously when they're most active. And if you want, you can even find some local writer hangouts to participate in in your area. That's it though, guys. Those are my 10 tips to get started writing. If you guys have your own tips, please feel free to write those down in the comment section down below, even if they completely contradict something I said. As always, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos and check out some of my videos right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and I will see you guys later. Bye.